So this is almost uh, like the typical uh, Faraday's law question. So <laughs> that's why I want you to do it. Um, so it says a rectangular loop of n uh, turns. So this n turns is uh, useful to remember because whenever you calculate magnetic flux, um, so you know you calculate flux through a single loop and then you multiply by n to indicate that each time it adds. Uh, moves to right with a constant velocity v while leaving the poles of, yeah, so we are given the uniform magnetic field b up to this region here. And then as the as the loop leaves the region, the magnetic flux through the loop decreases. Okay. Yeah, uniform between the pole faces and negligible elsewhere determine the induced voltage in the loop. So this is a application of Faraday's law, which says induced voltage, um, absolute value, is equal to absolute value of the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So here, the change of magnetic flux is not due to the change of magnetic field, but due to the area. So I think it's useful to write it out this way. Um, so time derivative of the, so, you know, the full mathematical expression for the flux is B as a vector dot product with the A. Here, what I confirm is that the area here is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So I can kind of simplify this as field times the area. But please remember that this is a dot product to the relative directions do matter. Uh, for other questions you might see. So the time derivative of magnetic field times the area. And here the magnetic field is constant. So the derivative just goes, goes through B or I can pull the constant out of the derivative. So I have B times the rate of change of area. And um, I think if you, you look at this uh, geometry and the description carefully, you can kind of come up with a way to describe this um, without actually doing any calculus. So the area is the length times A, or maybe a portion of the length, let's call that X. So length times X, it, this area um, inside the magnetic field that matters. And when you imagine taking the time derivative of the area, L is a constant. It's this side here, it doesn't change. What is changing is this X here. So the time derivative of the area is just uh, L times the time derivative of X. And oh, uh, and that is velocity of the loop because that's, um, the x, the length x changes at the speed of this. So, so once you realize that, then you don't you have to do any actual calculus. You just calculate b times l times speed v. Um, yeah, and that gives me the induced voltage. And oh yeah, I guess magnitude of induced voltage is, uh, and I <laughs> almost forgot. Um, I, almost always forget this. When I'm calculating the magnetic flux, I have to remember this N. Um, so there should really be N here. So N here and N here. So with all those corrections, then the magnitude of the induced voltage is N times B L V. It doesn't depend on A and that's, uh, that's actually to be expected because actual width of the loop doesn't matter. It, it's how quickly it's changing. It's the time derivative relationship that counts. Um, yeah, that's it, that's uh, it for the magnitude. Um, let me, let's look at the next uh, multiple answer question. Correct the statement below. There may be more than one correct choice. So I need to read all. Magnetic force only acts on the left L side of the loop. Is that right? I mean, it definitely doesn't act on the right L side. What I want to be careful is, does it act on this top or the bottom? I think it might. Let's see here. 
Um, so, well, let me uh, figure out the direction of current first. So, <laughs> uh, magnetic field is pointing into the screen, decreasing. So, the flux actually points out of the screen. Uh, the current will flow so that the magnetic field due to the current will oppose that. So the current flows clockwise. Okay. So let me first write down that. I mean, you actually don't have to get this direction right, but as long as you're writing it down, might as well get it right. So at this top portion, there's a current flowing this way. At this bottom portion, there's current flowing this way. And you might remember the expression for the magnetic field, sorry, uh, magnetic force on a current carrying loop or current carrying wire, which is current times L cross B. And this L here, it's perpendicular to the magnetic field. So I L cross B. So there's actually a um, upward force on this segment of the wire. And without doing the right hand rule, I would guess there's a downward force on this segment of the wire. So it's not technically right that magnetic force only acts on the left side. It also acts on the top and the bottom part. It's just that the net force on those cancels out. But if we had a loop made out of flexible material, you would uh, see it expand maybe. Uh, yeah, so, so the first choice is not correct. External force needs to be applied to maintain the constant velocity wave. That is actually correct. And the way you get it is, okay, so these two forces balance out. For the net force, I don't need to worry. And when you figure out the force on this segment here, you do I cross um, B, and the direction of that force points to left. So there's a leftward force of magnetic force. Um, velocity points to right. So unless there's an additional force, external force, this will be slowing down. So external force needs to be applied. And, uh, oh, current good, I figured it. Current flows clockwise, not counterclockwise, so that's not correct. The amount of current that flows is determined by the total resistance of the loop. Sure, why not? I mean, um, this gives you the voltage you have to do. For the current, you have to do voltage divided by the resistance, Ohm's law, and it's the resistance of the current flowing path. And in this arrangement, even this portion that's not under the magnetic field, current has to still flow through this portion. So yeah, so this is correct. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and it doesn't say determined solely by, so I think that's right. A net magnetic force on the loop pushes the loop up. We just went through that. There is no net magnetic force in the vertical or vertical direction. There's a force on the segments that are up and down, but they balance out. Um, and so that's not correct. Net magnetic force on the loop pulls the loop to the left. Yeah, that's what I figured out here. So that should be correct. So, uh, you know, just because it's a multiple choice, let me just double check to make sure there's no programming errors. <laughs> a little bit uh, neurotic there. Um, yeah, so that should be correct. Yeah, uh, this portion is correct. Oh, I guess there's some kind of a feedback. Let me just put in all the answers so that I can see the feedback. I don't know what I put in terms of feedback. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons this is a popular exam question because it illustrates um, the principle of energy conservation and we physicists love that. <laughs> so. Okay, so um, so that's it for this question. 